Hi everyone, today we will talk about the German doll earrings. Foreseen around the middle of the 17th century, remain the most popular type of earring. As we have seen, it consisted of a surmount, usually a bow motif, with three pear-shaped drops, the larger one at the center, suspended from a hook. The hook allowed the drops to be detached, so that the surmount could be worn on its own when occasion required. There are several explanations for the popularity of the girandole. The first has to do with fashion and clothes and hair. During the 18th century, hair was worn gathered up on the head away from the face, leaving the ears uncovered, and the low cut of the dresses for formal occasions left the area around the neck and ears perfectly suited for adornment with earrings. Secondly, earrings and particularly girandoles exploited the qualities of faceted stones, especially diamonds, which had become plentiful after the discovery in Brazil in 1723. Before that, the supply had been limited to the mines of Golconda in India. Also significant was the improvement in techniques for cutting diamonds. Around 1700, it is thought that the Venetian uh, Vincenzo Perusi devised the brilliant cut, a cut that enhanced the optical properties of diamonds, enabling the stone to reflect light and sparkle at its best. The new brilliant cut diamonds were particularly successful when mounted on girandol earrings with the stones hanging freely on both sides of the face and catching the light. Thirdly, improved domestic candles meant that more social occasion could be held at night, and in these circumstances sparkling diamond set jewels and especially girandoles were particularly effective. Until the mid-18th century, jewelry was set solely with diamonds. For formal evening occasions, diamond girandoles earrings were all the rage, while during the day girandoles set with more sober semi-precious stones such as garnets, carnelians, pearls, aventurine glass, and pastes uh, were preferred. For the first time in the history of jewelry, a differentiation was made between daytime and nighttime jewels, a distinction which remained to this day. The girandole remained the favorite type of earrings throughout the 18th century. And in general terms, its basic elements, the bow surmount, the drops, the emphasis on wide um, rather than um, length, and the practice of wearing matching bodies ornaments called uh, syringes, are features which had been common since the 17th century. There are, however, certain small differences. The early 18th century girandol may be distinguished from the, its 17th century counterpart mainly by its emphasis on the faceted stones rather than on the setting and enamel work. In the 17th century, the setting was decorated at the front and back with um, perchrom enamels and engravings, but towards the end of the century, enamel work and engraving were confined to the back and disappeared completely at the beginning of the 18th. Elements remaining from the 17th century include the rather stiff design with the clearly defined bow and drops as separate units and the pronounced horizontal development, uh, stressing width rather than length. In France, they were set entirely with diamonds and were characterized by a sense of movement and sculptural quality. In Spain, they were sturdy and set typically with a combination of emeralds and diamonds, a fact explained by the relatively easy supply of emeralds from mines in Colombia, which belonged to Spain. Portuguese girandoles were characterized by simple and flat lines and were usually set with topazes and chrysabrils from Brazil, uh, then a Portuguese colony. Girandoles of the second half of the 18th century show some uh, slight changes. In France particularly, they were no longer set only with diamonds, but with a combination of diamonds and colored gemstones such as rubies. Secondly, they gradually develop a more vertical outline with a more elongated central drop, noticeable in the Italian designs. And thirdly, the basic bow surmount is frequently replaced by a more complex arrangement, for example, the combination of ribbon bow and flower spray motif seen in the ruby and uh, diamond girandoles and in uh, Puget designs for girandoles dated 1762. One of his pages, for instance, shows six different designs for girandoles. The four set with pearls displayed intricate motifs in the center other than bows, a floral motif, two hearts, 
pair those and a trophy of love with two hearts and arrows. Tricacy of the central element is evident also in the emerald and diamond examples from Spain. The center in the form of a flower head cluster is set with a large emerald in a border of rose diamonds, framed by diamond set foliage spray motifs. Gemstones were commonly mounted in a close setting uh, with colored uh, closed at the back, which were lined with colored foils to enhance the color of the stone and improve the evenness of color. In the case of diamonds, foils gave a subtle hue to the stones. Gold was used to set colored stones, while silver was normally used to set diamonds, as suited their whiteness. And today, that's all we wanted to discuss. Stay tuned for future podcasts. Goodbye.